welcome you to Medical Tourism Updates, the first in a series of scheduled webinars hosted by the Medical Tourism Association. My name is Let's Stein, coordinator for the Medical Tourism headed in 2011, as well as an update on what has happened in the industry over the past year. We'll also review some of our Medical Tourism Association's activities and initiatives. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me at the address shown here and include MTA updates with today's date as your subject line. I would like to begin today's webinar with our Medical Tourism Association updates regarding the travel industry and our consumer initiatives. The numbers reflected here are from the United States Deloitte study in 2009, which has been recession adjusted and indicates the forecast for Americans leaving the U.S. for medical tourism. As you can see, this clearly indicates that nearly 1.6 million patients will travel for services by the year 2012. This constitutes a great benefit for the travel industry professional. As the number of patients traveling for healthcare increases, the travel industry continues to play a very large part in medical tourism. Travel agents are the key to successful planning on behalf of the patient, as well as assisting them during this possibly stressful time. Travel agents and also medical tourism facilitators, who are either travel agents themselves or work alongside the travel industry, are an integral spoke in the wheel of medical tourism. The MTA realized this need for a more concentrated approach to medical tourism and has taken a renewed interest in the travel industry. Beginning a campaign this year to engage these travel entities, including hotels, hospitality centers, travel agents, and convention and visitor bureaus in a broad range of consumer awareness. The travel agent plays an integral role in medical tourism by coordinating the appropriate travel arrangements and tourism activities with respect to the patient's health and possible surgical limitations. Appropriate access to medical care follow-up and rehabilitation services adds to the final outcome of a successful experience for the patient. Travel agents also have the ability to increase the number of referrals for other medical tourism industry entities through successful contacts in each destination. The positive patient experience results in greater patient satisfaction, which in turn creates more confidence and credibility for all involved. The MTA has always focused on the quality of care for patients, which is accomplished through patient advocacy as well as education. Travel agents are becoming more aware of this fact through MTA's education and involvement with the travel industry and its many facets. The overall experience for the patient, including communication between the travel agent, hospitals, and physicians, is paramount to the patient's well-being and will add to the success of the medical treatment as well as the final outcome. Now let's take a look at how the Medical Tourism Association is partnering with these groups in this fast-growing global industry. So far this year, we've been excited and pleased to be involved with the New York Times Travel Show, the Los Angeles Times Travel and Adventure Show, and most recently the Travel Distribution Summit in London, England. Our main goal in attending these conferences was to educate and bring awareness to the option of the medical and health and wellness tourism industry. This included explaining what medical tourism is, as well as how each business entity can become more involved in medical tourism. The first show attended, the New York Times Travel Show, was held in February, and it gave the MTA staff a chance to meet travel personnel from around the globe in the show that drew up to 18,000 avid travelers and industry professionals. We had the great pleasure of meeting various global country representatives, as well as attendees from the United States. 
with 500 exhibitors from up to 150 nations, domestic and international tourism boards, tour operators, hotels, resorts, and other travel-related companies, the MTA staff was kept rather busy. The next stop was the Los Angeles Travel and Adventure Show during the weekend of March 19th. This event featured hundreds of exhibitors from around the globe, top travel destinations, attractions, activities, resorts, products, and services. The Medical Tourism Association staff met with hundreds of travel agents and their partners, hospitality, and hotel entities. Shown here, from left to right, are Olivia Goodwin, our social mediator coordinator, Mr. Arthur Fromer, who is generally acknowledged to be the nation's foremost travel authority, and Gabriella Vicuña, our global program director. In both conferences, the MTA staff was truly encouraged to find out that so many travel agents are already working with people who travel for health care or wellness around the globe. And of course, it was terrific to spread the word about the Medical Tourism Association and its many membership benefits and programs. These weekend events also brought in a multitude of consumers who were ready and eager to learn more about medical tourism. The MTA staff was able to educate these consumers with the distribution of various free informational materials, which included a consumer passport brochure entitled your Passport to a World of Options. This booklet was designed to educate the consumer about medical and health and wellness tourism and give additional information about the medical tourism industry and its various options and benefits. In order to continue our consumer awareness program, the MTA is proud to be managing the number one Google-rated medical tourism website for consumers medicaltourism.com. This site will continue to educate consumers and answer their medical tourism questions regarding where to go and how to connect with partners in the medical tourism industry globally. This website will also be translated into various languages including Spanish, Chinese, just to name a few. Our most recent travel industry conference this month was across the pond, where the MTA had the good fortune to meet with representatives from England's top hotels and travel companies, along with airlines, affiliated business entities, and dignitaries from all over the world at the London Travel Distribution Summit. This was extremely beneficial as it served as a platform for the MTA to educate these companies one-on-one -on -one about the medical tourism industry. Along with the meeting of these professionals, the MTA also presented Medical Tourism Opportunities, a free seminar to all attendees in order to educate in a group setting about the role of the MTA in medical tourism, as well as the role of travel agents and the value to be found in medical tourism. The MTA was very pleased that we were able to raise awareness and build lasting relationships with travel personnel from all areas. Medical tourism is alive and growing. We are in the process of compiling results from our recent Medical Tourism Magazine survey. And here is just a sample of some answers from our travel agents and medical facilitator responses. 99% agree that they are optimistic about the future of medical tourism. 50% of travel agents responded and indicated that they partner directly with doctors and hospitals. This direct involvement with medical staff increases referrals and positive patient outcomes. 29% of medical tourism facilitators polled indicated that 80 to 100 percent of their patients traveled with a companion. This will aid in a boost of tourism. 34 percent of the same group indicated that patient and consumer awareness of medical tourism is an aspect that needs to be addressed. This is where the MTA is taking a step ahead 
to assist in the education of the consumer-based population. These conference attendances, along with future participation, are all geared toward the MTA's mission to seek out future affiliated industries and technologies that will allow international healthcare providers to operate more efficiently in the global healthcare industry, to educate patients, insurance companies, agents, brokers, consultants, and physicians from around the world about the growth of medical tourism, the globalization of healthcare, and to also promote the positive and stable growth of the medical tourism and the global healthcare industry with a strong focus on transparency and communication. I would also like to let everyone who's listening know that issue 21 of our medical tourism magazine due out in July 2011 will have a strong focus on inbound medical tourism. So stay tuned for this fantastic and informative read. Again, if you have any questions, please feel free to submit them via email at this address with the subject line of MTA Updates, May 24, 2011. It is now my pleasure to introduce to you Mr. Jonathan Edelheit, CEO of the Medical Tourism Association and Associate Editor of the Medical Tourism Magazine, who will continue the discussion on the subject of the MTA highlights and new initiatives for 2011. Hello, this is Jonathan Edelheit, um, CEO of the Medical Tourism Association. And I'm going to be going over with you updates in the uh, medical tourism industry and some of the things uh, Elizabeth was just touching upon were some of the uh, updates of some of the initiatives that we were doing, such as uh, focusing on consumers. And therefore, that's why we went to several of the consumer shows, um, some of the big travel shows around the, the country and the world to really educate consumers. And there were a lot of uh, consumers that were very interested in traveling abroad for healthcare. Um, and then we started to also exhibit and speak at uh, business travel shows. Um, to focus on travel agents since there's a large amount of travel agents that are getting very active in medical tourism. Um, you know, we know, you know, just one example is uh, or there's a re one Russian travel agency that sends thousands of Russian patients for eye surgery every year. So travel agents are becoming very active and in a uh, very important role in the industry. So, uh, you know, one thing that, you know, question is, you know, where is the industry headed? Where was it in the past? We're seeing the industry growing in a very positive direction. Uh, you know, uh, the only really statistics out there for the past couple of years are Deloitte, focused on the U.S. marketplace with Americans leaving. Um, and those numbers were originally, you know, going to be about, I think it was 23 million Americans leaving by 2020. And then they were um, recession adjusted because of the recession. And then it changed to about 1.65 million by 2012. And, you know, so we're seeing 35% growth in the American marketplace. Um, there's significant growth overseas as more patients are traveling for care, more international insurance companies are giving their patients options to travel to other countries. So worldwide, we're seeing growth in medical tourism and awareness of it. Um, and we're also seeing more players in the industry. We're seeing more hospitals, more facilitators who are sending patients overseas more doctors being involved, and more governments and insurance companies supporting the industry. One of the MTA's big initiatives for this coming year is focusing on some of the new and emerging markets. Um, we're focusing on Russia and the uh, CIS countries, China and Far East Asia and Africa, um, you know, countries that there are a large number of patients traveling for health care and where there's really a need for quality of health care. So we focused a lot of our energy in these markets. Um, you know, as uh, Elizabeth was talking about earlier, er, earlier, we're totally revamping and changing medicaltourism.com. The new portal should be up in the next week or so with a whole new layout and pictures. 
on mediation on desktop languages and, uh, and the next will be Chinese and Russian and then we'll move on to other languages from there and so we'll have a much broader focus on medicaltourism.com reaching more patients and we're going to be putting our destination guides on there for free um, which the first one should be coming out by the end of the summer. One of the areas I wanted to address is healthcare reform in the U.S. Um, I know there's still a lot of people internationally that want to know, um, you know, how is healthcare reform going to affect Americans traveling for healthcare? Um, you know, it's pretty much a given in the U.S. Everybody agrees, common sense, healthcare reform is not lowering costs. Um, costs are going to significantly increase under healthcare reform. Um, costs have already increased from the day healthcare reform was implemented because of it. Costs went up, insurance premiums went up. Um, so what we're starting to see now, though, is a change because um, when we had our first conference in 2008 in San Francisco, we had all the major insurance companies in the U.S. Um, after the conference starting to issue requests for proposals and starting to move forward with medical tourism. They were all implementing it. Then health care reform came along, and all of a sudden the insurance companies were under threat and attack for their livelihood and being put out of business. So they stopped looking at all new programs and they defended themselves against health care reform. And then after they finished defending it and it got adopted, they focused on how do we comply with it, how do we deal with it, all those details. And so now I'm really happy to report that we've kind of gotten to a place where U.S. insurance companies and employers, they've accepted it, but they're comfortable with health care reform, meaning that it's no longer an unknown. They know how it affects them. They've put in their compliance plans, how they're going to work with it. And so now that they're comfortable with it, now they're actually going back to business as normal and moving forward with new and innovative programs. So we're starting to see some of the first really big insurance companies in, in, a, in, a, in a while and employers who are moving forward with medical tourism, um, from health insurance carriers to limited medical carriers to dental insurance carriers here in the U.S. And I'm really excited about it because what we're going to see is once you have one do it, there's a competitive effect where all their competitors of that insurance company are going to have to implement it in order to still remain competitive in the marketplace. Um, the global benefits industry is really growing. Um, this was a segment that we targeted specifically because we knew where we were headed the next couple of years as an industry in medical tourism. Um, the global benefits industry, for those of you who don't know, it's for people doing multinational business, so it's international insurance companies who do business in other countries. It's employers who have offices in other countries. And these people, I firmly believe, are, are going to be the first to implement medical tourism and cross-border care because they have offices in other countries and they already have employees traveling for health care. So for them, it's not a huge step to say, let's implement this because not only are they already doing it now, um, they don't have issues about the quality of care. There's no cultural language barriers because they're already engaged in it now because they have offices around the world. And so, you know, we've already seen this over the past year where some of these insurance companies who are international and some of these international employers, you know, are, are the ones that have actually quietly implemented it or have plans and are in the process of putting together the program and implementing it or communicating the program to their employees or insurance so they actually do it. So this is going to be a huge marketplace, and we just have a really big focus on it. We have a global benefits magazine, and we have a, a global benefits track at the conference. Another area that we've really focused on uh, you know, for 2012 is new member benefits. So we've added a lot of new benefits, but um, some of the reasons why we've done this is the industry is evolving. And as the industry has evolved, so have our members. And some of them have asked for new levels of benefits that are higher. And because people need more access, um, the members need more access, and they're educated and they're growing, and they, they want something different that's going to help, help them really network and grow their business model. So one of the things that we've added is we've created some new tiers of gold, platinum, and diamond membership. And one of the neat benefits we've added to those levels is trade missions. Um, and I think they're going to be some of the neatest benefits that we'll have this year. With trade missions, um, there's going to be no cost to participate in them, and members just cover their own travel and, you know, and personal expenses on the trip. But we, we are going to go to probably um, you know, 20 to 30 destinations this year in emerging markets. Um, so we're going to have approximately 10 to 15 trade missions in all these emerging markets. 
and then we're going to allow these MTA members to attend as part of a delegation. So they can go and they can attend a briefing on the international healthcare market, you know, what's going on in that destination. They can participate in hospital and clinic site visits, country workshops, but more importantly, they can focus on networking meetings, connecting and being introduced to important business contacts in the healthcare sector, on the, on the private sector, and also in the government side, so they can start getting patient referrals and creating strategic partnerships and alliances. And this should be huge. And we talked to several of our um, hospital members who this was a big target for them, and this was something that they really wanted. They, you know, they wanted to go into markets like Russia, Africa, China, um, but they don't know who to contact. They don't know who are the right players, and they don't know how to combine all these meetings in one. And we're, they're basically going to be allowed to do this great missions. Now, with healthcare investors. Um, healthcare investors uh, are getting much more active in this industry. Uh, medical tourism is becoming a really big target for them because it's a new and emerging industry that's growing fast. So we have healthcare investors constantly coming to us who are looking to invest in the industry from people looking to invest a few million dollars to about $50 million. And then we always have members and others in the industry looking to come to us who are looking for investment. So we're going to see, I think we're going to see a lot more investment in this sector, and in a little while I'll go in to explain how we're having a healthcare investment track at our conference to bring in healthcare investors. Um, we're really excited to say that this year will be the first year we're going to launch medical tourism awards. They're going to be the first medical tourism awards ever, ever done in the world, and they're going to be uh, announced at our October 2011 conference. Um, we're going to be opening nominations to the industry in June. Um, and allow people in the medical tourism industry to actually participate and to vote. Um, so destination guides. Each guide, um, you know, we're launching our destination guides, and this is going to be, I think, huge to the growth of the industry as a whole. Our first one should be coming out just before the conference, and then we should be rolling out some more after that, but they're going to be country or city specific. They're going to be detailed information about the quality of health care, in a specific country and talk about the hospitals, the clinics, the tourism, uh, patients, and then why they're so important. Travel until the health patient. And no one's providing this information to them now. They want it for free. They don't want to pay for it. And they want to get it online. So all our destination guides will be online for free for consumers, and they're going to be translated into other languages. They're going to be in English and in the language of the country it's in, and eventually translated into other languages also. So they're going to be online, and then we're also going to make them available uh, if people wanted to purchase a print copy, but we see everything happening online. For buyers of healthcare, employers, insurers, these are going to be huge too, because they don't know what are the right destinations for healthcare? So this is how they're going to learn about it and be comfortable. And we already have uh, you know discussed this with several big insurers and employers, and they're just super excited we're launching these because this is the information they feel they need to make decisions and to be comfortable with implementing medical tourism. We we also feel the destination guides is really the only sustainable way for countries to really promote themselves. And the reason why is we're seeing countries spend a lot of money promoting themselves, um, and they're you know they're doing things like you know um, go to conferences, um, they'll do fam trips and things like that. But at the end of the day, um, you know they're they're educating the people at the conference of the fam trip, but then those people have to go back and convince insureds, consumers, and employees wherever they're located about the quality that they saw or they learned of in the destination. And so, you know, it's very difficult to do and to convince people, but that's what the purpose of these destination guides are, so that this can be communicated back to the general population. And they'll all be put on the uh, medicaltourism.com website, so we're really excited about that. Um, the next issue of our magazine is going to have to deal with inbound medical tourism. This is going to be inbound anywhere in the world, patients coming to countries for healthcare. We're going to have a special focus on international patient centers in the U.S., and their processes, how they're growing, um, what they're doing, and how they're reevaluating their target markets, and how they're understanding their markets, because things are changing in the U.S. Uh, a lot of U.S. hospitals that didn't have to market themselves before are starting to have to, because they're getting increased competition. And also, some of their profits are shrinking, 
because of international insurance companies running out their networks for patients to come to the U.S. for health care. But what we're also seeing is the organization of a, a lot of big companies and a lot of efforts to bring patients to the U.S. So the U.S. is going to become even a more dominant player in medical tourism for those people that either can afford it and have the money or for patients with international insurance policies. Um, we'd like to touch upon really quick our upcoming conference in Chicago, um, our fourth annual World Medical Tourism and Global Health Care Congress. So we're really excited about this coming conference because I think it's going to be one of our biggest yet. Um, we put it in Chicago. A lot of people ask why Chicago. It's because it's a central location in the U.S. It's very easy for people to fly into from all different parts of the world. Um, where in the past we were in California, so it was a little bit more difficult. It was on one side of the country. And there's a huge center in Chicago of large U.S. employers, large multinational and international employers, uh, U.S. insurance companies, and international insurance companies. So this is like a heartland, a major place where a lot of the business and healthcare is done. The American Medical Association, the American Healthcare Association is located in Chicago. This is the center of it all. And we've actually gotten more increased interest since we moved it there. And compared to previous years, we're up about 200% in attendance. We've got some amazing Congress speakers this year. We've got, um, if any of you ever watched Donald Trump's The Apprentice, we've got Bill Rancic, um, who is the winner of the first Apprentice. And he's going to talk about health care uh, you know, in the U.S. and in the world. And he's going to talk about how do you succeed in today's world. We've got Dr. Robert Ray a famous plastic surgeon who's on, who has his own TV show on Dr. 90210 on ETV. We've got Dr. Uh, Cecil Wilson, president of the American Medical Association, doing a keynote, and also the Minister of Medical Services for Kenya doing a keynote. So we've got some really amazing keynotes, but we've got great companies speaking from Mary Kay and American Apparel, uh, you know, some of the largest employers in the U.S. and global employers. Um, we're, uh, we're really excited about the attendees. The networking software, we've totally changed our networking software this year. It's now been totally redesigned by micro, former Microsoft executives, and it's going to be a, literally amazing. I'm, I'm just so excited about it. I, it's hard for me to control you know, my energy about it because of how different it is. It's actually more like a social network, like social media, like a Facebook for networking. So you actually can load your pictures on there, your profiles, all your contact information. You can search for attendees for profiles, bios, and uh, photos. You can blog, uh, put up forums, put in all your interests and tags, um, really in-depth profiles. But with that, you can actually um, sync the networking software to your LinkedIn, Twitter, and Facebook so you can see who's in your network who will actually be attending the conference. Um, and then you know, know who's coming. And then you can get, pick your meetings that you want to go to that, you're, that are scheduled and then pick your sessions, and it'll all sync together, and you can even send it to your PDA and make changes on the fly. So this year we're expecting about 1,500 attendees from about 87 countries. We're really expecting potentially to go much larger than that. Um, we've got four integrated tracks or conferences this year, Global Benefits, um, Healthcare Development and Sustainable Healthcare, our Global Healthcare Investment, and um, health and wellness. And so for the global benefits, you know, our theme this year is streamlining benefits and processes for multinational employers and insurance companies. Um, and we're going to have a lot of insurance companies, employers and agents, and air ambulance and medical evacuation companies there. Um, for healthcare development, we're going to be focusing on groundbreaking approaches to healthcare design and management and sustainability and people building hospitals all around the world. The global healthcare investment will focus on emerging markets for healthcare investment, and we're going to be trying to bring in a lot of healthcare investors from some of the biggest firms in the U.S. and around the world to sh showcase case studies of different areas for them to invest in healthcare, and then bring in people from the medical tourism space to network and connect with them. And then the health and wellness track is really going to be focused on the integrated health and wellness out there um, in case studies on how employers are implementing wellness programs, how insurance companies are and how they're integrating it with medicine and healthcare today. Um, so we're really excited for this year's conference because I think it's going to be, you know, we're going to have a huge difference, um, a large, uh, large number of attendees, and, and we're with the awards we're going to be giving out, it's going to be really exciting and are going forward.
uh, you know, um, if you have any questions, you can go ahead and email me at john, J-O-N, at medicaltourismassociation.com or Lisbeth at Lisbeth at medicaltourismassociation.com or you could potentially um, go ahead and email uh, or call us. Our phone number is 561-791-2000. If any of you want a copy of the presentation at the end, uh, feel free to email us a question. Um, if anyone has any questions, they can type it in now. And otherwise, I would like to wish everyone a wonderful week and look forward uh, to the next uh, 